الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها المزمل قم الليل إلا قليلا نصفه أو انقص منه قليلا أو زد عليه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا إنا سنلقي عليك قولا ثقيلا إن ناشئة الليل هي أشد وطأا وأقوى مقيلا إن لك في النهار سبحا طويلا واذكر اسم ربك وتبتل إليه تبتيلا صدق الله العظيم During the study of the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a very important topic came to the mind and that was how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned for the first part of this ummah to develop to connect themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to leave all of their jahiliya that were they were involved in and to be able to accept the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the orders of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and not only accept them with the feeling of being trapped or with a feeling of being under pressure, In fact, accept them with love and respect and be looking for more of those orders from Allah and His Messenger وسلم, regarding the other matters of life. Think very seriously about what I have just said. Because these things and these qualities that we find in Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een were very unique. And these things that we find in Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een are something that even Allah admires them for it. They are very high qualities of human beings. When a believer reaches to high quality of his Iman and the high levels of his faith, that person achieves these qualities also. Leaving all of this jahiliya behind our backs. And 
finding ourselves being ready for accepting the orders of Allah. And as I said again, I would like everyone to pay attention to this, that not under a pressure and not feeling I have, I have to do it. These are five prayers. I don't know. I don't feel like doing it, but I have to do it. And these are my responsibilities. I really don't have the time. I don't feel like doing it, but I have to do it. Instead, we find Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'een who came from a worse jahiliyyah than we may have seen in the, our past. And they were involved in it in every way. They were part of the jahiliyyah. And if you listen to their stories as they narrate themselves, you would find that they used to do things that we cannot even believe, we cannot understand how could a person would do something like this. But when they came into the deen of Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised them in such a way that now they are not accepting these orders because they are under the pressure of the orders of Allah or the punishment of Allah. In fact, they are looking forward to have more. Take a very simple example. We know that in the days of Jahiliyyah, everyone was used to drinking alcohol. It was something very common. In the beginning days of Islam, still drinking was allowed. And we know that gradually the orders of Sharia came and the ayahs were revealing and then things started taking place and things that were supposed to be haram, they became haram. Things that were supposed to become fard on the ummah, they were gradually given the orders and they started becoming fard. Before the ayah forbidding alcohol was revealed, Umar radiallahu anhu used to make dua and especially would make the dua loudly in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will give some ruling about it and his dua used to be Allahumma bayin lana fil khamri bayanan shafiyah Ya Allah give us a clear order about drinking his sense is telling him that is going to be forbidden one day. And the order is coming gradually. And Umar radiallahu anhu in his dua is requesting Allah, is asking Allah that, Ya Allah, just put the order on us. Just throw the order on us. We are ready to accept it. I have feeling one day you would tell us, don't. It's not allowed anymore. Ya Allah, don't give us the order gradually. Just throw it on us and we will accept it. Looking forward for these orders, asking for them. It's not saying, Ya Allah, take it slow. Ya Allah, take it easy. Ya Allah, we already have enough. We just came into Islam. No. Ya Allah, I'm looking forward for you to just throw it on us and we are ready to accept it. And we know in the history of this country, there was a time when they tried to stop drinking. And that was the period of the history when alcohol was consumed the most in this part of the world. The time when they tried to make it illegal, that was the time when people just came out drinking it all the time to protest against that order. And when that order came to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, and is not coming under pressure of a government, it's coming from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they know that they can say we don't want and they can just go away. I don't accept it. I don't like it. But we find the hadith telling us whatever they had in their homes, everyone just threw it out of their house.
the point that we need to learn from these Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een, how did they make themselves ready to accept all of this? And of course, this was just one example. And we find a lot of other examples. For example, same thing about hijab. Umar radiallahu anhu, again and again, running to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, please give a special order about it. So they're looking forward. A sahabi, Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As radiallahu anhu, comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the complaint against him was that he planned to fast for the rest of his life and perform tahajjud every night throughout the night of his life. And he would never get married. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him and said, No, Abdullah, I won't allow you to do that. You have to get married. And you have to fast some days and then miss some days of the fasting. And then I won't allow you to stand every night throughout the night in your life. You're performing Salat al-Tahajjud. Perform Salat al-Tahajjud in some portion of the night and then sleep for the rest of the night. And look at this conversation that goes between him and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he asked him about fasting. Abdullah Reduce the amount of fasting. Okay, Ya Rasulullah, I'll fast two days and miss one day. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said no. Ya Rasulullah, then the least I can go, Ya Rasulullah, is fast one day and miss the other day. So every alternate day. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Okay, that's a siyam dawood. This is the fasting of Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam, fasting that is liked by Allah, so I'll allow you to do that. So he's looking for more and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam is trying to reduce. And they went through salah, they went through tahajjud, they went and finally came to Quran. Ya Rasulullah, I would like to finish one Quran every day. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam said, you won't be able to do it. You won't be able to keep up with that throughout your life. And I would like you to make a schedule for the rest of your life. Something that you can hold to it for the rest of your life. Until you depart from this world. So Ya Rasulullah, how about I finish one Quran every two days? He said no. Reduce it even furthermore. Ya Rasulullah, every three days. And here we find the Sahabi is asking for more and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is trying to reduce. The point we find over there is these Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Mujma'een, they found themselves, look at the Jahiliya that they came from, and look at the orders of Allah that were coming to these Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Mujma'een, and how they found themselves not only willing to accept them, they're looking for more and more at all the times. What was it? That was making these Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een look for more and find themselves willing to accept all of this. This is the only thing that we need to understand. And the thing we find, the answer to this we find it in the Ahadith. And that was the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised them after they became Muslims. He raised them just like we raise our children. He taught them the way we teach our children. But of course, the way of raising and the way of teaching is different. And the curriculum is different. We have not adapted, adopted the curriculum of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His main curriculum were two things, ibadah and akhlaq. Through this ibadah and akhlaq, morals, adab, respect, manners, through this Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was purifying their lives. <coughs> and that was the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started receiving the wahi, the revelation, 
We know that for almost six months, he used to be sitting in the cave of Hira. After that, when he went home, after receiving the revelation his, at his home, and the ayahs revealed, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil qum al-layl. O you who's covering himself with the sheep, it's not a time to sleep anymore. Get up during the night time and perform the salah. Aisha radiallahu anha says, after this order, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to sp spend the whole night performing salat al-tahajjud and reciting Quran. Hatta tawarramat qadama, until his feet were swollen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then made it a little easier for him. And he said to him, Nisfa, now make it half of the night. Awinqus minhu qalila. Or if you want, now look at this, how Allah is putting it there. And look at how he is giving the choice. Awinqus minhu qalila. You perform salat al tahajjud for half of the night. Or awinqus minhu qalila. Or make it little less than half and sleep little over half. But awzid alayhi. If you want, you can perform tahajjud for little over half of the night. وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا And keep on reciting Qur'an slowly. So Allah likes to see him there for more than half of the night. But because he sees the feet are swollen, says to him, if you want, you can make it a little half, less than half. And this is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was raising Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. Not only that he's asking them to perform Salat al-Tahajjud and spend the time between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he even goes out to wash them while they're doing that ibadah. And to make sure that his companions who are going to have, carry the responsibility of carrying this message of the deen of Allah to the world, they are not sleeping, they are not just thinking of the rest, they are spending their time between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not just coming out of their homes and talking during the daytime. They have a time between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu after Salat al-Fajr and he said, last night I heard you recite in Quran in Salat al-Tahajjud in a very low pitch. Why was that? He said, Asma'tu man najayt, Ya Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, the one that I was talking to heard me. That was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He heard me no matter how low I would recite. He called Umar radiallahu anhu. Umar, you are reciting Quran in a very loud voice. What was the reason for that? And Umar radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, that was so, because so that I would wake the people that are sleeping and I would keep the shaitan away. The point is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going around the streets of Medina Munawwara during the night time. And listening to the recitation of the Qur'an from the houses of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'een, making sure that at that portion, at that part of the night, they are not just sleeping. They're doing what they're supposed to do. One day he said to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'een, Inni la a'rifu buyut al -ashariyin. I can recognize the houses of the clan of the people of al ashariyin that was a clan from Yemen, the clan of Sayyidina Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu. He said, I can recognize their houses during the night time, in the darkness of the night. Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'in asked, Ya Rasulullah, how could you do that? And how is that possible? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, because these people are very, have a very soft heart and when they perform Salat al-Tahajjud and recite Quran during Salat al-Tahajjud, I keep on hearing the cry from their houses. So when I hear the cry from the houses, I know that this is the house of al-Ashariyin. Watching the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa I found a very amazing ayah in Quran that talks about all of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Ya Rasulullah, I watch you, I'm with you when you go around and you're looking at these Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. 
It's a talk of love between Allah and His Messenger وسلم, that Allah has narrated in Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these ayahs, in those ayahs says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْعَزِيزِ الرَّحِيمِ Have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most powerful, the merciful one. الَّذِي يَرَاكَ حِينَ تَقُومِ The one who sees you when you get up and you perform your own salah. وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ And when you go back and back and forth to these Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, watching them, they are performing the salah. وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ Going back and forth among those who are doing the sujood and performing the salah. This is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was raising that community. And here we find a hadith, a well-known hadith, I'm not going to read the whole hadith which is in Sahih al-Bukhari, about a sahabi who performed the salah in the masjid and he made a mistake. When he came and said salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, وَعَلَيْكَ السَّلَامِ إرجع فصلي فإنك لم تصلي. Go back and perform the salah again because you have not yet performed the salah. That sahabi never thought that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be watching him while he's doing the salah. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting with the sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam and he's busy talking to them. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is watching that sahabi also. While he's doing the salah, and is catching his mistakes, when he came back, he sent him back to perform the salah again to make sure that this sahabi will learn the salah and everyone else will realize that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is watching the sahaba when they perform the salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally gave a certificate to sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa about just this point. There are many different certificates that they were given in Quran. But when we talk about this tarbiyah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prepared them to carry the message of deen, <coughs> to be willing to accept the orders of Allah. This is where we started from. Finding ourselves willing to accept the orders of Allah and not feeling under pressure, under a burden, that, oh, I have to do this, this is the order also, this is something that we have to do, and this is because it's in Qur'an, this is because it's in Hadith, I have to do it. No, finding ourselves willing to accept these orders of Allah, and in fact looking for more and more to learn more, so that we can adopt and follow these orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is something, truly speaking, we find it ourselves missing it. At the time of Salah, it seems that it's a burden. I have to get up and do it. Oh, it's the time of Salah again. We just performed the Salah and now again it's the time for another Salah. I feel like it's a burden. And same thing with other orders of Sharia, other orders of Islam. When we talk to our family members about these different orders of the Sharia, how many times we find that there is a feeling of, okay, you know, we have to do it. This, some, this is something that we have to really get rid of it. Get it out of our hearts and minds that we are burdened by the laws of Sharia. In fact, we are blessed by the laws of the Sharia. This should be our feeling. We are blessed to have this order. Oh, is this is there? I didn't know. Astaghfirullah, I was going against it because I didn't know it. I'm blessed to know this also. Now I would follow this order also. That willingness has to be there. So that we look forward to learn more and more of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and adopt it and bring it in our day-to-day -day life. So that certificate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, and we are talking about how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prepared them so that they are ready to accept these orders. In fact, as I gave some examples, not only they were ready, they are asking for more. And they are looking for more and they are going to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, we need more. That certificate says about Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een 
كانوا قليلا من الليل ما يهجعون that this was their situation this is how they purified themselves and cleaned their hearts and made themselves willing to accept the orders of Allah كانوا قليلا من الليل ما يهجعون they used to sleep for a very small portion of the night وَبِالْأَسْحَارِ هُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ In the last portion of the night, they all will be doing istighfar. Ashar, the time of suhoor, the last part of the night. هُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ They are doing istighfar and seeking Allah's forgiveness. وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌّ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ And they keep on giving to those who ask and the ones that don't even ask. They look forward. See, giving to those who ask is something normal. Okay, you know, we have a fundraising for our masjid. If we won't give, who will give? So we have to give because this is our masjid. That's one thing. But the other thing is going out, looking for the people who are in need. Looking for the needs of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Looking for the needs of those needy people who may not ask. وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌّ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ And there is a share for those who ask and the ones that don't even ask in their wealth. This is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised them. These were the qualities when they came into their lives. Istighfar in the last portion of the night. Performing some raka'ah of salat al-tahajjud. That we pray to Allah. That will, that will be the connection between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will be the way of purifying our souls and our hearts. And then istighfar, seeking Allah's forgiveness. So whatever sins we have committed, at least we get rid of those. We clean ourselves. We wash ourselves so many times a day to make sure that our physical body remains clean. But how many times a day do we get up? Do we get the chance to wash our hearts and wash the worst najasa, the worst sin that exists on the surface of the earth, and that is the sin of the shirk and kufr and of the ma'asi, of the sins that gets into our hearts. There is need to wash our hearts more than we wash our physical bodies. And we know in the morning, just try to leave home without washing your face and rinsing your mouth, and then go and talk to people. No one would want to talk to you. But we go our home with all the sins of the whole day, collected so much dirt and sin on the hearts, so much rust on the heart. And then we go to sleep. Next morning we are back in the same field and same place. It doesn't get cleaned. And then finally it gets the rust. And that rust doesn't allow us to understand or get back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And see the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to Salat al Mustaqim and give us tawfiq to adopt these qualities of Sahaba Ridwan Allah alayhi majma'een and to purify our souls and our hearts to be ready to accept the nur of Allah and the hidayah of Allah and accept the guidance from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.